Hi, Judy. Welcome. Hi, Diane. Welcome to Fab Fit Friday. My sister had a half a day from school today, so she called me up, and the first thing she said is, Fab Fit Friday. So she, I think she likes, <laughs> she likes participating in my joy of my Fab Fit Friday. Um, all right, so I'm going to be working on my skirt with the pockets in the shorts. And then I also made the back skirt pattern piece for the dress that I'm working on with the stripes. So those are the two things I'm going to be working on today. And I'm also going to tell you a vocabulary word of the day. Hi, Diane. Hi, Judy. Oh, we have two. Oh, Judy said aw. <laughs> um, all right, so the vocabulary word for today is flaculate. And the reason why that's the vocabulary word of the day, it has nothing to do with sewing. However, I had a disaster with my pool cover and it sunk into my pool and all the leaves that I so proudly prevented from going into the pool in the fall ended up in the pool because they were in the cover and I couldn't get them off of the cover. Hi, Jen, know me. Yes, I do. I do know you. And you told me your name before. Ooh, it's like a quiz. Kathy? I don't know. Tell me. Tell me. Remind me your name again. I'm going to write it down so I don't forget. Um, so anyway, I got the filter going. And instead of running the filter till July to get all the stuff out, there's stuff you can put in the pool that basically, Kathy, Kathy Stone, yay, that's what I thought. All right, I get a gold star for that. Um, so if you put this stuff in the pool, this liquid in the pool, it flaculates, meaning it gets everything in the water to sink to the bottom. So while we're having Fat Fit Friday, my pool is flaculating, and I've been having so much fun with that word, my daughter and I were trying to think of ways to include it in a sentence, so... Um, that's what I'm doing outside of my pool. All right, so I know we're going to start with the skirt, so let's get going, because I also want to show you, I'm dying to show you this dress that I made that I'm wearing as well. I made this last summer, and I probably did show it to you, but it's my test dress to work with a non-knit fabric with my T pattern. So let me just show you that first, because I'm so excited. So this is my original T pattern, and... Um, this is a novelty Georgette fabric that was sewn like with elastic thread so it has texture and stretchiness. And I put the two pieces together, the side front and the center front, to make one piece. I'm going to do that again, I think, for the dress I'm working on now. And then I just want to show you the fit of it because this is um, rayon crepe. What am I saying, rayon crepe? This is rayon chalet. And it's, it doesn't, I mean, it has a little give, but it's not super stretchy. So what I wanted to show you, the fit of it, because this is going to be a similar fit to the dress I'm working on, um, you know, with the stripes. So super excited that I already tested working with my T pattern without knit fabric. So that's why I'm excited to get that striped dress done. But before we start with the striped dress, I want to show you the skirt. I'm going to switch my view. And um, I guess I'm, all right, everybody shut their eyes. I'm going to blow out the lighting on my camera here. Hold on. All right, let me just make it a little less bright now so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is I got this fabric from Fabric Mart in one of my two Fabric Mart shopping sprees this month. And you can see it's got giraffes, look how cute they are, um, and flowers. So this is going to be the skirt for my skirt. Oops. Okay, and I decided to pair it with this gray cotton lycra, lycra cotton. 
and I want to show you what I decided to do here. This is a really lightweight fabric, so when you're using the cover hem stitches on such a lightweight fabric, it's, um, you know, it needs some stabilization. And I got some really good comments during my, fab, uh, my Fit Tip Tuesday video um, for different things that I could use. Palmer & Pletch makes a spray that you spray on and let it dry and it stabilizes the fabric. I didn't have time to go look for that. Um, there was another pressing um, stabilizer different from starch. Probably it's similar to starch, but again, I didn't have time to go shopping to find stabilizer. So instead, what I did was, on this one, I used strips of knit stay tape to back the um, the fabric above the pocket. So where there was just a single layer of fabric, I just added that knit stay tape there. And you can see it still gives, okay, but it added support to the cover hem so it came out nice. And after I had that good result, um, I decided to run it down the entire line on the second side here. So you can see we've got these stabilized seam edges. There's no seam here, but it stabilizes the flat fabric. And you can see on this one, the pocket came out really nicely. Um, you know, so the whole pocket is stabilized. You know, so now I'm going to have a skirt with two pockets. Now, the one thing I wanted to say about this is when I was sewing um, the pocket, I sew it from the wrong side so that the double row of stitching is here and the decorative um, chain stitch is on the right side of the fabric. So in order to um, see where it was, I drew a line, but then I made the boo-boo of starting at the waist on this side, and what it did was it folded down, it pushed down the end of my pocket, so the pocket was actually folded down when I looked at it, so I had to take this little bit apart and put it back up, and I actually re-fused it with the double-sided fusible tape here, <laughs> so let me just show you that really up close. Hey, Andrea, welcome. All right, so you can see here my, um, my chain stitching is broken here because I had to take it out to flip the pocket back up. It flipped down because I started from the top and worked this way. So underneath it flipped down and I didn't see it. So the rule to that is always start from the hem and go up towards the pocket. That way the pocket is laying in the direction you're sewing and it won't do that. And so that's how I did the other one. But anyway, so what I want to do here is I want to just show you before we sew this together, I want to show you how to decide how deep to make your pocket. I don't want stuff hanging out at the very hem of my pocket. Let me just make this bigger so you can see again. Um, so let me just actually move these pieces out of the way for a second. Here is the pattern piece. So if you guys did not watch Fit Tip Tuesday this week, this is the pattern piece I made. Okay, so there's the shorts. Let me just put this over here. I'm, gonna move up. I'm moving me over a little bit. Okay, so there's the shorts. And basically, I just attach the pocket to the bottom edge. So when you fold it up like this, Okay, there's your pocket. Oh, DIYer girl says thanks for the lesson on the pocket. You are so welcome. I was trying to come up with something that would be easy and didn't add bulk and extra seams because technically you could cut seams front and back and then have a panel on the side um, and then add the pocket. And actually, if you like all that seam detail, I do have another yoga pants pattern called the Trident Yoga Pant, and that actually has a center front and center back seam with a side panel. So it's very easy to put a pocket in there. But I came up with this idea because literally, you can finish your hem, fold the pocket up, and do everything all with just one piece of fabric. So that's how I got that 
pocket. So I'm just going to put that aside for now. And I'm just going to get my sewing machine over here for a second. And I just want to show you a couple things. I'm going to just stitch in black because um, these are going to be under my score and no one's going to see the stitching that I'm going to do right now except for me and you. So I'm not ultra concerned with it being like perfectly matching in terms of the, um, the thread color. Alright, so what I want to show you here is I am going to turn this on. And the first thing I'm going to do, on the pocket that I screwed up, so like right here, there is a raw piece of, raw edge of knit right there, because it's just laying flat. Oh, DIYer girl says, elegant and genius pocket design. Well, thank you so much. All right, so I'm going to make it unelegant right now, because what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to use my triple zigzag. And I'm just going to continue stitching along here. So if you don't have a cover hem stitch on your on your serger, or if you don't have a serger, the triple cover hem could be used to do the entire technique. Although if I were doing the the, co the triple cover hem, I would stop here. I wouldn't keep going because there's no reason to. I just wanted to have a nice, you know, I didn't want to have a stop start on the cover hem that attached the side of the pocket. So I'm just going to use my triple zigzag. I'm going to make it about seven millimeters wide so it kind of matches the width of my stitch here. I'm just going to hand walk it to see if it matches. Let's see. Oh, maybe six millimeters. I'm going to go down to six millimeters or six and a half. Okay, so basically now I'm just going to stitch this. And when I get to the top of the pocket, I'm going to back up. you can see this would be a good option if you don't have the cover hem or if you don't want to fuss with your cover hem use your triple zigzag to sew the pocket on and that will hold that raw edge nice and flat so that's let me just show you let me make sure you guys can see all right so see that's how I'm gonna fix that and then like I said I don't want anything in my pocket all the way down to the hem so this design let me just make it big again you can see because we folded the pocket up I could technically you know if I stick something in there like my scissors you can see they would go all the way down to the hem to where I sewed it and I really don't want stuff all the way down there so you can see right here I don't need to have stuff all the way down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the depth of my pocket. And really, the only thing I would put in here probably is my phone. So if I just put this here, you see I have plenty of room for my phone, and I have extra length there. So I am just going to find a ruler. And I'm just going to draw myself a guideline of where I'm going to stop my pocket, like this. Okay, so that's where I'm going to stop my pocket. And I'm going to get my other one. I'm going to have that stop in a similar, that's from the very bottom, it's an, it, three and a quarter inch. So let me go ahead and draw that on this one as well. Hi, Diane. Hi, Donna Alexander. Welcome. So nice to see you. All right, so I am going to just do this, draw my line like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my sewing machine back and I am just going to stitch. I don't think I'm going to use my triple zigzag for this. I think I'm just going to use my straight stitch. And remember, the stitchiness 
on a sewing machine stitch is created by how many times the bobbin thread re makes a stitch with the top thread. So I'm going to shorten my stitch length to like 2.2 and I'm going to start right here and I'm just going to back tack in the seam allowance. Oops. I'm just going to go right across the pocket. So you can see that's not nothing fancy, but now I've limited the bottom of my pocket. And you can see this is a pretty stretchy seam having a short um, stitch length. So let me just do the other one. If you're worried about it not being stretchy enough, then what you can do is after you start sewing, stretch it a little bit as you go just a little bit. But don't stretch it when you're locking off though. Okay. All right, so you can see this one is really stretchy. All right, so if you wanna give yourself a straight stitch at the bottom, that's going to have a lot of give, go ahead and stretch a little bit as you sew. Now I'm going to get rid of my sewing machine. Put this away. Alright, so let's see what happens when we steam this because you can see when we stretched it, it got a little rumply. So I'm gonna get my little iron over here and I'm just gonna steam it. I got a little water, but you can see steaming it flattens it right out. Okay, so it is possible to stretch it too much and it won't steam out. So you wanna test that if you want to use your sewing machine and stretch as you sew. But you can see that's a really stretchy seam now. All right, so now my shorts are ready to sew together. So I have to set up my serger. Um, I apologize for that, but this will just be a review of um, threading the ovation serger. Um, DIY girl would like to know if you suggest using fusible interfacing on the pocket because the bottom of the pocket is a stress point. Um, you could, I, I think what's going to happen with this pocket, because it's going to be stretching around my leg, whatever's in the pocket is going to be pressed up against my leg. So I don't think it'll be pushing down and weighting down on the base of the pocket as much. I do think having this stay tape on the sides on the wrong side gives the seam, the side seams good stability there. I suppose you could have put another piece of stay tape right here. I wouldn't interface the whole pocket though because then it, it's not going to stretch the same as the leg. Okay, so if you want to, if you want to give this some stability here, just put a piece of knit stay tape where you're going to sew the bottom of your pocket. And actually, the knit stay tape is also across the entire hem too. So if you don't limit the pocket, um, when I did the, when I did it on my Fit Tip Tuesday, I only um, put the tape here and here, and then I folded the pocket up. But then afterward, I looked at it on the second one I didn't sew, and I went all the way across with the stay tape. So stay tape is actually, or, or fusible tape is actually in here too. All right, so now what we're gonna do is have my serger here. And if, I know some of you probably do not have ovation sergers, but basically this is an air threading, fabulous serger. 
I put dark blue thread in it because um, my skirt fabric is dark blue. What I'm going to do to start out with is I'm just going to use my screwdrivers here to show you. So right now you can see my needles are in the cover stitch position. So I'm just going to take those needles out. I'm just lefty loosening the screw just a little bit. And I'm just going to righty tidy it because I don't want them to vibrate out of their holes. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those same needles. I have stretch needles, so this works out perfectly. I'm just going to stick them into the back and where the overlock positions are. And I'm just going to tighten those needles down. Now, just as a general reminder, when you're working on your serger, no matter which brand it is, make sure you can see the tops of the needles mm -hmm. in the little window. And I think you can actually see them. See, that's how you know the needles are inserted up all the way. Hi, Pat. Welcome. Oh, hi, Sandy. Oh, Sandy says she hasn't um, watched in a long time, but she looks forward to start sewing again. Well, I'm super excited, too, that you're here to sew. And Pat says, I'm thinking about a swimsuit fabric for the base with an SPF overskirt for kayaking. Um, well, just so you know, Pat, this is my swim skirt pattern as well. Um, and I do, you know, I have made it out of... Um, you know, Lycra bathing suit fabric. I will tell you the nicest s shorts fabric to to use is um, su suplex. It's very soft and stretchy, and it dries really fast. So that's just an idea for the shorts underneath a swimsuit. Um, suplex works really, really nicely. Um, it's also very lightweight. I don't know if I would try to put a pocket in it because it's very lightweight, but it makes a wonderful shorts for a um, for a swimsuit. All right. So now that I now that I changed my needles, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to engage my air feed by pre turning this over here. And if you watch here, you'll see as I turn the hand wheel towards me, those tubes are going to close. But actually, you know what? I almost screwed up. I'm going to take that back off. Notice my um, upper looper is down. I have to let that come up, okay? Because when you do a cover hem, this has to be locked down. Now I'm putting it back up. I'm also unlocking my blade so everything is in motion. Now I'm going to put threading on. And I'm going to slowly turn my hand wheel until it locks in place. Did you hear that? And see how the tubes locked in place? So now I can very easily, I've already threaded the thread through the um, antenna uh, thread guide. So I'm just going to bring my thread down through the tension area here. And I'm going to put my thread right in the port here for the lower looper I'm going to press the button and you're going to see it shoot out over here see isn't that nice and then I'm going to just do that over here as well on the upper looper okay you can see it shot right out once I get that threaded I'm going to put my surging back on that way I can move my hand wheel and we are going to thread the needles so I'm gonna put this one in first that's my left needle this one's my right needle and basically now what I'm doing is I'm setting up my serger for a um, a four thread stretch stitch because that's what I'm going to use to construct my shorts and my skirt Um, oh, Pat says, thanks for the tips. I did not realize that was the swim short pattern you were w using. Well, actually, it is, well, it is. I did separate, okay, so on my website, if you go look, I have a swim skirt, 
pattern and then I have my skort and simple pattern. The skort and simple pattern comes with a six gore skirt, but you could easily put the center and side together and make it A-line. So if you join the, the, the side and center together and cut the center piece in half, you can actually make an A-line shape. Um, but the shorts are the same for both patterns. So really you don't need both patterns. So if you already have the skort, skort and simple pattern, don't buy the swim skirt pattern because you can easily make the skirt. And if you need help making an A-line from the gores, let me know, I'll help you. All right, so now I'm gonna just thread my needles. And some tips for threading your needles. I cut my finger here, my thumb hurts, and the knife is in the way. So I'm gonna just put the knife down and I'm just gonna rotate the needles till they're in the highest position. With the knife down, it gives you a little bit more room to get in there and thread your needles. All right. Another thing, um, I've been seeing a lot of um, kinder swimsuits or more um, generous swimsuits or swimsuits that don't show everything you own kind of things and one of the styles I really like is I saw an a-line skirt with shorts that actually came down to just above the knee so you can also make your you know your swim skirt more comfortable and more um, more coverage by lengthening the shorts to knee length so that's another idea for you, um, you know, especially if you're trying to limit your exposure to sun, lengthening the shorts will give your legs a little bit more coverage. I mostly use my swim skirts in my own pool and I usually only have time to do that after the sun has shifted away. So I'm not as concerned with the, the sun screen portion of my swim skirts. All right, so I've got my threads threaded. I'm just looking to make sure they're not twisted. Okay, they're not. All right. Okay. Just tucking them behind the thread guides. I will say the one thing about this ovation I do not love is the, the thread guide right above the needle. I think they could have done a better job with that. All right. Okay, so now we're all set. So of course, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch, I'm gonna make sure I have my stitch selector on A. And if I move myself out of the way, for anyone who has an ovation over here, um, my stitch selector is gonna be on A. And other than that, I'm gonna put my stitch length at about two and a half, and I'm gonna put my blade back up and I'm going to set that my cutting width to seven. All right, so let's do a scrap. So I have plenty of scrap here to play with. Let me just cut a piece that's not gigantic here. All right, so you always want to test your fabric to make sure it's sewing nicely before you start on your project. You don't want to find out that something isn't good and, you know, after you've already sewn a seam. All right, so let's just see how this is going to stitch. And I'm going lengthwise on my grain because that's where my inseams are. So I just want to show you here, see how it looks a little bunched up underneath my needles? Okay, see that? It looks bunched up. The reason why it's doing that is because my differential feed is set on 1.5. That's way too high for this and it's shoving more fabric in there than I need. So I'm going to put my differential feed on N Let's see what that does. N means the front feed dogs and the back feed dogs are going at the same rate of speed. 
So let me just show you that the difference here. I'm going to put them side by side so you can see. And maybe we need a little more light. All right, so see how the top one looks flat and nice, and this one looks like the fabric is bunched up under the loopers? This is a sign that your differential feed is set too high above N or 1. All right, so this is at neutral. A lot of times when you're surging in the vertical direction along the vertical grain line, you don't need to up your differential feed. So I've got that in a good spot. So now I'm going to surge my inseams on my shorts. So again, we're just going to take our shorts and we're going to put them right sides together. Now I've already hemmed these, so I'm going to have the weird thing where, see the hems are already done. So I'm just going to make sure those are matching. I'm going to start from the hem and I'm going to sew up to the crotch. And I think I'll just use just two wonder clips here to hold my crotch points together. Wonder clips are your friend at the serger because you can't sew over them. All right, so I'm just gonna lift up and put the fabric under there so that the needles can go right into that hem. And I'm not gonna cut anything off, I'm just gonna skim my inseam. one inseam. I'm just going to do my second inseam here. You know, so if you were making either a swim skirt or a skirt, and let's say you didn't take the time to put pockets in it, you could literally sew this skirt together in under an hour. It's a very quick project, and I have to say that skirts are definitely my go-to in the summer because they're cool and comfortable. and there's no rub rub. Also, just between us, if you're having a sweaty day, because you're wearing a skirt over your shorts, no one can see you're having a sweaty day. That's the other reason why I really like wearing skirts in the summer. Okay. All right, so. going to take my shorts. Move this big so you can see. All right, so I've got one inside out. You can see my inseam. I'm going to turn the second one right side out like this. And I'm going to put the inseam together with the inseam matching right sides together. And I'm just going to wonder clip my inseams flat like this. Actually, it's going to be like that. And then I'm just going to match up my top waist edges. Now, if you do this, if you've gotten this far and you're matching up from the crotch to the waist here to here, and it's not matching up, meaning you have a front, which would be shorter, and a back, which would be longer, that means you made either two left legs or two right legs. So you always want to make sure that you're putting your fabric together to create a left and right leg, or you'll have one inseam on the inside and one on the out. You'll have to just take out your inseam. Of course, if you took the time to put pockets in and they're both going in the same direction, that'll be a pain. Just sew this. All right, 
so I've got my belt all clipped. I'm going to start stitching from the front because then when I go through um, the inseams, it'll push them to the back. So this is the front. I'm going to start there. I'm going to stitch all the way around to the back and my inseams will be going towards the back if I start from the front waist edge. All right, so let's, let's sew this together. I said I was starting in the front. Let's get this back down here as you can see. Alright, so we're going to start in the front. And again, I really don't want to cut anything off here because the seam allowance is the width of my stitch. Just gonna stitch along here. I think this cotton lycra is gonna make a comfortable short. When you're going over the inseams, if you want to lift up your presser foot and let everything relax for a second. look at my shorts with pockets. You know, I was thinking about this after. You could make shorts with pockets and not put a skirt over it. So if you're hiking and you don't want to have your happy hiking belt on, um, if anybody's wondering what my happy hiking belt is, that's a little piece of knit that I designed um, with pockets so you don't have to, you know, carry stuff when you're hiking. But I think these would be really cute. Look how cute that is. I think those are pretty cute. I'm excited. So I've got my two pockets. It looks like I have seams here, but I don't. That's just the cover hem going up to the top. And you can see that I sewed my, um, my, inseam, my inseams match and my hems match pretty well as well. So what I'm going to do to finish this is, now that I've sewn this, I am going to go back to my sewing machine. I'm not going to take the time to do it now, but I just want to show you here. I am going to cut this. I am going to use the triple zigzag or a bar tack, and I'm going to stitch through both you know, the seam allowances are going in the same direction, so we're going to push them to the back like this. And then I'm just going to either zigzag the entire hem a little bit or just bar tack it. So that'll keep this laying flat so it doesn't bug me. All right, so that's how I'm going to fix that. But I think these could just be shorts. Look how cute that is. Oh, come here. All right, so you could just add a waistband on here and you would have shorts with pockets. But we are doing a skirt, so let me get that. Now this is a crepe ITY knit. It's very um, soft and flowy. So I will not be hemming this hem because cut it, la it stays really, really nicely. So I'm just going to put my right sides together here. Now, one of the features of the skirt pattern is that it, the skirt waistline is a little bit bigger than the shorts waistline. So you stretch the shorts to fit the skirt waist, and that way the skirt's not pressed up against you up at the top. So there's a little bit of ease in the skirt compared to the shorts. 
and I don't know if you guys get my newsletter. Um, my newsletter has a really, um, well, I don't want to say really cool, but basically I compared three different um, adjustments for a sleeve to either lengthen or lower the armhole. And then um, that was the newsletter tutorial. And then in there as well, I ha I'm having a sale. So if you're interested in sewing the squirt with me, um, if you use the coupon code MAY22, you can get 22% off all my patterns. So if anybody's watching and they want to make a squirt and they don't have the squirt pattern, or if um, there's something other pattern that you wanted um, and you were waiting for it to be on sale, now's your chance. Um, I don't do sales very often, maybe two or three times a year. So take advantage if there's something that you would like to have at 22% off. All right, so here is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to just sew my my side seams here. So I'm going to go from the wide end or the hem end up to the waist. And again, I know my differential feed is going to be fine because there's very little stretch in this vertical direction. side seam. take a look at what we have now. So you can see, even without pressing my seams, see how nice and flat they lay? Okay, so that's how you know the differential feed is good if your seams are laying nice and flat. Um, this knit is so agreeable, I'm not even going to bother pressing it. But you can see here, here's my skirt. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shorts and I am going to find the center of my front and the center of my back. So this is my front because it's, the front is a little bit wide, bigger than the back. So here is my, oh dear me, you don't need to see that much of me. Um, so my center of my front is right here. I'm going to put a clip at the center. And then the center of my back is right here. I'm going to put a clip there. Then I'm going to lay it so the front is faced on top like this. And I'm going to take my shorts and you can tell very easily where the front is and which is the back because the back sticks up higher. So this is my back, this is my front. So basically I'm gonna stick the shorts inside the skirt and I'm gonna pin 
the center front of the skirt to the center front seam of the shorts like this. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the back. I'm going to pin the center back seam right sides together. Or actually the right side of the skirt. I mean the right side of the shorts are um, against the wrong side of the skirt. And then I'm just going to stretch this to match. Because remember, my, you can see here my, skirt, my shorts are a little bit shorter than the waist of the skirt. So I'm just going to stretch it to match. And I'm just going to walk my fingers out like this. I'm going to grab the center of the shorts and I'm going to pin the side seam together. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side. So you can see again that the skirt is a little bit wider than the shorts. Now depending on the fabric you use for your shorts, if you have like a compression knit, they would be like shaper shorts. So there's all different options with this pattern to make it comfortable for whatever your comfort need is. All right, so I've got those pinned on the quarters. And I'm going to serge these layers together. And I'm primarily doing that to show you how, um, I want to say how creepy the, um, what the, the, the edge is going to look after I serge. It looks really yucky when you serge these two fabrics together, but then when you put the waistband on, that goes away. So I just want to show you here. Oops. So I'm going to put my skirt face down because it's bigger than my shorts. And I'm just going to get that in there. Now when you're serging in a circle, sometimes what can happen is your um, threads might be so tense that they're pushing on the edge of the fabric. Um, so I want the, this fabric to lay against the knife. So I'm going to take my threads and I'm going to pull them away so I can really insert my fabric right up against my knife. And DIY girl would like to know if you change your differential feed when you're sewing the shorts to the skirt. Um, I'm not going to do that and the reason why is because I'm going to be stretching the shorts to fit the skirt. So if you're stretching your fabric, the differential feed isn't going to matter. So I'm just going to leave it where it is, and I'm going to literally, you know, start stretching the shorts to match the skirt. And I'm really trying not to really trim anything off. I mean, if you trim a little off, that's okay, but you're going to work quarter to quarter, matching up. the edges. And then if you take the time to sew these two layers together, when you go to put your waistband on, you're not fighting with keeping the shorts even with the skirt even with the edges of the waistband. So basically what we're doing is we're creating one layer of fabric here. Or we're gonna pretend the skirt and the shorts are a single layer of fabric. to my stop start point I'm just trying to tame a little bit of the curl here 
Okay, so here's how to stop and start in the round. I don't know if you guys, um, when you're working on your surgery and you're surging in a circle, when you get to the end, I learned to just veer off the edge. I'm going to show you a slightly neater way to do it. I'm going to cut my tail off. Okay, once my tail is cut off, I'm going to put my knife down. And the reason why I'm putting my knife down is because I'm going to overlap my start point, but I don't want to cut anything ahead of, you know, where I'm overlapping. So I'm just going to keep going until I overlap my start point a little bit, maybe half inch or so. Once I've overlapped, I'm going to lift my presser foot. I'm going to lift my needles. I'm going to push everything back so the fabric is not under the needles. And then I'm going to put the presser foot down and I'm going to chain off. Now you, oops. now you can see what this gives us is a nice neat start stop point without it veering off the edge. Alright, so what I want to show you here is I'm going to lay this flat so you can see okay. how funky it is. It's going to look kind of gnarly. So when you lay it down, see how it looks all funked up? Don't be alarmed by this. So this is why I took the time to show you it looks really yucky. That's because this gray raw edge is pulling on the skirt raw edge because they're not the same um, width. So now becomes my decision on what fabric I'm going to use for my waistband. And I think I'm going to get myself a piece of my black performance sports knit. So just um, give me one second. Of course, did I cut that in advance? No, no, no. Hold on. I think this fabric is going to be a really nice, comfortable um, fabric to make my waistband. This is my um, black performance sports knit. So what I'm going to do is push my serger out of the way. I am going to fold this in half. You can see I save all my little scraps from making previous projects here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this. So I can work with this piece right here. Okay, so I'm going to cut it. I'm going to use my big 48 inch ruler and I'm just going to trim it even like this. Trim it right here. Uh, Alright, now I know my So I'm just going to trim it like this. To make it even. So I got rid of all my raw edges. And then I'm going to trim it to be... Oh, let me flip it over. I think I didn't get all my raw edges. Hold on. Oh yeah. See how there's still some raw some raw edge here. Let me just get it so it's nice and even. I'm going to cut it. Cut it right here. I'm not going to make a wide waistband, so I'm just going to cut it right here. Perfect. Then I'm going to make my waistband 
four inches thick, so I'll have a two inch wide waistband. So I'm going to cut it at four inches wide. Two, three, four. Right here. Oops. Wow. <laughs> that was an epic fail. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to move all this out of the way. And then we're going to look at our waistband and we're going to look at the top of our skirt. Now this is a tried and true pattern for me, so I don't need to try on or measure my waistband. I know it's going to fit if I make my waistband a little bit shorter than my waistline. So the easiest thing for me to do is to line up my skirt and I'm gonna start on the fold. So here's my folded edge right here. And I'm just gonna line this up and I'm just gonna walk it. I'm just gonna walk the skirt right underneath it without stretching it. And I get to here. So, okay, so if I, right here, I am actually going to cut it. That's where I marked where that yellow is. I'm going to cut it an inch shorter, which is going to make it two inches shorter than the measurement of our, my waistband. So I'm just going to cut it right here. And then, of course, I'm going to lose a little bit of a seam allowance, too, but that's okay. All right, so there's my waistband. You can see that my performance sports knit is really stretchy. So if you want to take the time to sew your... Um, sew your waistband together on the sewing machine, then you can press your seam allowances open and it's a little less bulky, but I'm just gonna serge it together. And I have my right sides together here already. So I'm just going to serge this together. I have to put my knife back up. surged. Now what I'm going to do is on my skirt, I basically have quarters marked. I'm going to use the back and the front and then the two side seams as my quarters on the skirt because they're so closely matched. I mean the fronts are a little bit longer but really it's not that significant. So to find the quarters on my waistband, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it so it's right sides face out like this. And I'm gonna fold it in half so that the, the seams here are gonna represent the first quarter marking. If I fold it in half, I've got my second quarter marking right here. Then if I match those two pins together, oops, make sure that's good, then I'll get my other two quarters. So like if I put the, those pins together in the center, I know that this is a quarter right here. And then on the other side, the quarters right here. Okay, so now I've got my quarters. Here is the most important thing about attaching a waistband like this to a garment. You wanna find your, your seam. Okay, here's my seam. You want that to be your center back seam. I know that sounds like really obvious and whatever, but every now and then in a rush, I'll put the, sen the seam at the center front and then I'm constantly putting that garment on um, backwards. So I always look for my center back seam to be my back, to be the center back seam. So I'm gonna line up the center back seam with the center back seam of my shorts, which is right here. And I'm just gonna pin that together on the outside of the skirt. Then I'm gonna take the second clip and I'm gonna clip that to the side seam of the skirt, which is right here. 
Oh, that's not the side seam of the skirt. That's the... Where's my side seam? Oh, my side seam's over here. All right. Well, you see what I just did? I lost my halfway point because I took it out and then it was wrong. All right, so it's right here with the side seam of my skirt. Right here. I'm going to pin that together. Then I'm going to take the, the, the pin in the front and I'm going to line it up with the shorts front right here. Okay, let me just see. Lazarus says, Hi Jen, beautiful pattern. Do you recommend putting an elastic in the waistband for a person with a smaller waist and larger hips? Yes. That's a very good question. Um, Lynn, let me just show you. If you have um, a defined waist, meaning your actual waist is much smaller than your hip, then to make it fit nicely, what you're going to do is you're actually going to, when you go to sew the waistband, let me just make this a little lighter so you can see the seam. All right, so here's my seam right here. You're going to leave a little hole on the side that's face out. So I'm putting right sides together. So this part is solid, but then just leave yourself like a three quarter inch hole here and then you can snake elastic in it after it's attached to the skirt and shorts. I call that my floating elastic technique. So that's an excellent question. And here's the thing, there's been times when I've made um, yoga pants and for one reason or another, I wanted them to be a little bit firmer at the waist. You can go in and actually just take the seam out and make a hole to put elastic through there. All right, so now that I've got that pinned at the quarters, I am going to sew this elastic on. And then my skirt is going to be essentially finished, except I'm going to have to tack the seam allowances at the bottom of the skirt so they don't come undone. Now remember, the shorts skirt combo is a little bit bigger, so I'm putting that face down against the feed dogs to help... Um, feed that fabric or ease it in and I'm going to start somewhere near my center back seam here so again I'm going to lift my needles use my screwdriver to push those threads out of the way so I can really insert that and get that rubbed up against my um, knife. So see, I've got it in there. You can rub it back and forth a little bit like this, and just make sure those needle threads are not so snug that they're denting the fabric edge in. Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to take out my first clip here. And basically now I'm going to just do, I'm just repeating the step that I did when I sewed the layers of skirt and um, shorts together. I am going to skim a little or I'm just going to stick the shorts and the skirt out slightly so I make sure I hide my first row of stitching. It doesn't have to be a lot, just like an eighth of an inch. You just want to make sure that this isn't showing um, so you want to make sure you're sewing deep enough in that it's not showing. So I'm just skimming a little bit off. I started at the center front because there's my seam. That's all right. It doesn't really matter where you stop and start. All right, I'm working on my last quarter here.
again. Cutting my tail off, putting my knife down. Um, I'm going to overlap my start point. Lift my needles, lift my presser foot, push everything back, and then chain off. We have squirt, everybody. Okay, so let me just show you here. Just looking in to see where my, all right, so this is my back, my front. So what I wanna show you here is look how nice the waistline lays now that we've sewn the waistband on. You can see I have this really comfortable Nice waistband. I think I'm going to just try it on. I do have... Oh, I don't. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to... I want to model it for you. Let me just see if I can show you how cute it is. Okay, hold on one second. Alright, hold on. i got to just hike this up. Skirt. All right, so obviously I have on my dress, but basically, how cute that is. You know, and I've got my pockets right here. So I can put my stuff in my pockets. I am super excited with my new squirt. Comfortable waistband. Super exciting. All right, let me just take that off for a second. Hold on. All right. Okay. I actually had shorts on under my dress. So that was like double padding. Basically, super excited about my new Squirt. And I can check off one of my Me Made May projects finished before the end of the month. Okay, so there's my squirt. Super, oops. Super excited about that. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I just want to show you what I'm doing and if anybody wants to go I certainly understand that but I do want to show you my um, maxi dress pattern let's move this out of the way okay. alright so hold on one second Diane says she hopes Julie has more of that elephant fabric at Fabric Mart. Um, I'm not sure if she does. I went to go back to see if there was any more of the striped fabric. I think the striped fabric for the maxi dress is gone, but I did not look to see if there was still um, I didn't look to see if there was any more elephant fabric. Alright, I just want to show you this. Last week we worked on this. I'll just show you this. And really, I started probably five new garments in May because I was using them to show different techniques. So um, basically, <laughs> I'm going to be in finishing mode for the rest of the month. But basically, this is what I've decided I'm going to do with my um, striped fabric, which looks like this. 
here's my scraped fabric, just so you guys can see it if you didn't see it already. Um, this is a the softest double gauze I have ever felt in my entire life. It is just amazing. Um, and I'm going to be using this as a stripe blocking for this maxi dress. And again, that's why I, I'm really happy that this fits because I know if this fits, that fabric will fit because this is a, um, this is a, um, a chalet, a rayon chalet. All right, let me just see here. All right, let's see what's happening here. Andrea says, I love the lighter weight fabric as the skirt. Oh, it is so comfortable. I wore a colorful version that I made um, last summer to Anna Abby's graduation, and it was so comfortable to wear sitting and standing. It was just really nice. Uh-oh. Pat, oh, Kim says, so cute. Thank you, Kim. And Pat says, I just looked and there is only one giraffe fabric, a rayon chalet. Oh, well, you could use the rayon chalet to make this dress. Um, and Andrea says, oh, we have two Andreas. Welcome, Andrea. Super cute. Thank you. And Diane says, Pat, that's a bummer. I'm sorry. Ugh. The fabrics at Fab if you see something at Fabric Mart Fabric that you like, you need to buy it immediately because not only are they selling online, but they have a retail store as well. So things come and go from Fabric Mart really fast. So I just want to show you here. Oops. So just so you can see, I'm going to cut up this pattern along the different colored lines. So this section here is going to have stripes going in this direction. I'm going to sew it to stripes going in this direction and then I'm going to sew the bottom one going straight and I had some questions about that actually someone I think emailed me to ask me if I thought the straight orientation with all of the bias orientation was going to cause um, this to be not as stretchy or not not compatible um, I'm going to go with I think it's going to be fine because it's so soft and breezy but also keep in mind if the hem hangs a little bit different on an asymmetrical kind of block dress it can add interest um, so I think it's going to be okay but the, the reason why I um, what I want to show you is I'm going to start with this side so I'm folding it in half this is my back that I made and I'm going to fold that in half as well make it manageable so this half is going to sew to this half so let's just look I'm going to put it this way so you guys can see all right so so and this is what I was trying to talk about last week um, in terms of what I wanted to do just, just unplugging my iron so I don't burn anything up back here Okay, so what I wanted to show you guys is, like if, let's say from the top to here, the stripes are coming down like this. So we have options here. I could like continue these stripes going in the same direction then of course I would have to match them all along, you know, so like the stripes could continue this way, or I could have them be chevron like this. So when you're looking at my side view, there would be V's pointing down the side seam. And I think Mary had asked if she thought the V would be add um, width or make it less slimming but I really I don't know I think anything that's on a diagonal is going to be slenderizing so it may be that I will cut out this top section so it's going in the, the you know the the chevron 
Oh, Pat says straight play, not striped angst. <laughs> well, I just, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of the best way to do it so it's flattering. Um, so to start with, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my right sides together, or just the side seams together. I'm going to match them here. I'm going to clip them with a wonder clip. I'm going to walk it down. Because what I want to do is I want to mark where the seams are going to be between the sections. Okay, so my first thing is going to be right here. So I'm just going to make, um, well, it's going to be on this side actually. So that's where that's going to be. And then if I keep walking, Oh, there's only two because the middle one stops before the side seam. So there is where it changes there. Now I'm going to flip this over and mark. Oh, on this side. Give it a minute. So on this side. There's only one, and it's way up here. So if I pin that together, the only place that it that it there's a seam on this side is right here. So let's look at this now. So see, you can see on the bottom of this one. These stripes go all the way to the end. Okay, so there's no, there's only one seam, which will be way up here. Let's open this up and look. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so that means the back is going to be back piece is going to be like this. Okay. Um, and then so if I wanted to make um So then let me just put this like this over here. I'm going to show you. So over here, let me just fold this in half. So see, I've got this like this. So you can see that if the V ends here, Maybe something that could be interesting is in the back, I could have a continuation of this line like this. So I'm going to just make this like this. Okay, so we'll have a point on the actual seam in the back. So this, I'm going to use the same colors if I can find them fast. Um, let's see. My blue. So we'll use. Okay, so these stripes here will be matching these. Like this. So this will be the blue here. Okay, so when you're looking at the side seam here, it'll be it'll make a it'll make a triangle, but the point of the triangle will be in the front. So I think that could be fun. And then let's put it on the other side. So 
this entire edge on the other side, you know, I think I could have, I don't know, get my stripes going like this. for a second. I mean, there's a million ways I could, you know, cut this apart, but I'm just trying to pick something that'll be interesting. So you can see in the back, I'll have this shape with a little piece cut out over here. That could be interesting. You know, and then these stripes would just keep going like this. I think this will be cool. You know, something like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I may play with the angle of this, though. I might make it a little more angled. Because then, of course, when I get down here, it's going to be... They're going to end like this. So I think that that could be kind of cool. So that's, you know, and then of course, up here, these will be going in this direction. You know, this way. So I think this is what I'm going to try. Right, so I'll have bias that way, bias this way, and then straight down here for my back. So that's what I'm going to try. Alright, so I think that's what I'm doing. So before I cut this dress out, I'm going to finish... few other projects so I still have to finish my um, I still have to finish my denim skirt and I have the tank top that I showed how to measure the um, how to measure the length of your strip when you're sewing to finish an edge so if anybody didn't get my newsletter definitely go check that out because I have links to all of the tutorials I did in the intro I have an update on Carol's Garden. I have um, the sale, the new uh, pull on pants pattern, which I can, okay, so I have all these things started. I cannot wait. And I'm making myself wait. I am going to make shorts, long like board shorts out of this. So um, I wanna make these, but I'm not making these until I finish all this other stuff. But I do have my easy pull on um, shorts and pants pattern. I will tell you, I cannot wash the French Terry shorts fast enough to put them back on my body. They are so comfortable. So if you're looking for a pattern that's really easy to sew, that's not skin tight like a yoga pant, that's made of knit, the easy pull on shorts are and pants is a really cool pattern. But that's going to be made out of this. Um, but anyway, so that's my Fab Fit Friday today. I hope everybody has an amazing Memorial Day weekend. Take some time and relax and enjoy yourselves. Um, I probably will continue to just work my regular schedule because I can't really call it work. I love everything I do. But I hope you guys can take some time off, do some sewing. Um, I will tell you that in July, I was going to try to fit it in in June or even at the end of May. but. In July, I'm going to be doing a class on the pull-on pants and shorts. So that'll be a self-hosted Zoom class. So I will have more information about that as soon as I schedule it. Um, let me just see. Pat is saying um, cha changing stripes will add lots of movement. Oh, I'm super excited. I feel like this is going to be like a nightgown. So comfortable. I just want to show you one more thing before I go. I forgot. 
um, I have the pieces for the neckline or for the top of my bodice here. Let me move this out of the way. And I just want to show you what they look like and what they're going to look like. So keeping in mind, normally my um, my T pattern has a side front and a center front like this. Okay, I don't want that seam in this dress. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to cut that out yet, but I want to make it one piece. So the way you do that is you basically overlap your side and center front um, three quarters of an inch, and then you get this one piece. And this is um, you know, the center seam here. I also scooped out this neckline a little bit more. So if I line this up, you can see, see I scooped my neckline out. Um, and um, that's how I'm going to put this together. Oh, Kathy would like to know, is that the Abbey dress? No, Kathy. This is the T pattern. So this dress right here, you. I wore this last week, I think. My original T. Let me just show you. This has. Um, you know, it's hard to see. I'm going to blow it out so you can see. So you can see here, this has. This seam is above the bust. See where this is? The Abbey dress has an Empire waist down here. So this seam is above the bust. It has the side piece, which is right here. And it has the center front right here, like that. Okay. And so this has a lot of, um, this pattern is the first pattern I ever drafted. And I will tell you, it continues to be my best selling pattern. People will tell me that, oh, I love your T pattern. I've made it up in so many different versions because, you know, you can have it with a sleeve. There's a little cap sleeve. And I think I even made this cap sleeve a little bit shorter, but you can see the sleeve, I actually lined it. So I, I cut out two sleeves for each side, sewed it at the hem, and then just finished it like it was one on the inside. So if I turn it inside out, you can see. And this, this pattern comes in misses and women's sizes. So you can see here the construction a little bit better from the inside. I have my line sleeve, my little side front, and my center front piece. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm working on. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining me to kick off your Memorial Day weekend. Like I said, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to be toiling on my pool while it's flocculating right now. Um, I'll be scooping leaves as soon as I can see them and then I will be getting that in ship shape. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will put links to the T pattern, the skirt pattern, and if I can get a link to my newsletter, I'll put that there under the description as well. So thank you so much for joining me and have a lovely rest of your Friday. Oh, wait, Kim says, let me just say what, oh, hold on. Kim says, everyone have a safe weekend, Jen. The serger tip at the end, the round seams was terrific. Thank you so much for that. You are entirely welcome, Kim. If you guys have um, specific questions on using your serger or anything, make sure you post those because I love doing um, subscriber Q&A for my Fit Tip Tuesday. And actually, I'm going to tell you right now, my Fit Tip Tuesday this week is going to be the difference between a um, off-the-shoulder sleeve cap and a set-in sleeve cap and why you need to have the appropriate height in your sleeve cap to make your sleeve fit properly. So that's what I'm going to be doing for Fit Tip Tuesday this week. Um, oh, <laughs> Kathy says have fun with those leaves. Well, just as one more pull note, the reason why that happened is I forgot that little step where you put the rope across the pool so the lining can't sink into the middle. 
So I am going to have, I'm going to build a tent over my pool this fall because I am not, I'm never going through this again. So um, I will have fun with the leaves, but this will be the last summer I have to play with those leaves because I'm going to make sure they don't get into the pool next year um, or next fall. So anyway, <laughs> all right. You guys have a great rest of your day. I will see you again very soon.